And we are on. Greetings, brethren. This is Robert Marshall here in Waco, Texas. Uh, Secretary of Waco Lodge, Deputy Director of Kansas Lodge Research, yada yada, same old guy with all the same old tasks. Uh, here with my usual partner in crime, Brother Alex Bowers in Gordon, Kansas. Good evening, Brother, Brother Alex. Alex. Thank you all for joining us once again for our uh, nightly chat and toast. Uh, we've got a few more faces on here tonight. Uh, this is Brother Worshipful Brother Derek Kittle, the master of my lodge out here in Gardner, and Brother Scott Mead, who uh, is a transplant from Texas and now is a member of Gardner Lodge as well. Uh, so we actually had a virtual lodge get together tonight. You know, no official business, no ritual, nothing like that, but getting the guys together, checking in on each other, and uh, they wanted to stick around and see what we do here. So we appreciate having you guys tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, guys. Are they talking? What are you toasting with tonight, my brother? What am I toasting with? I am sipping on some coffee, uh, but I am toasting with a bottle of Crystal Head Vodka. Nice. Now that, that is just a shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said that is just a shot, right? It's not a sipper. Both. <laughs> uh, Crystal Head Vodka is actually uh, distilled three times and filtered seven times, so you actually can drink it straight. Holy cow, man. That is an awesome uh, awesome glass you got there. Love that skull. Yeah. Well, we've got quite a few joining in with us already. Got some comments pouring in. Hello, Brittany. Hello, Scott. My wife's on there. Brother Sherman, Brother Staley, Brother Terry, Brother Fletcher. Good to see you all. Thank you for joining in. If uh, the rest of you are in here, man, drop us a comment in the comments so uh, we know what's going on. Let us know how you're doing today. And since we're running a few minutes behind this evening, we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, Facebook just didn't want to respond. So Robert got blasted with a handful of messages at the last minute there. But Robert, what are you sharing with us tonight? Uh, let me pour a bit of this. I will, to buy some time, point out that I think I just saw that Brother Mead was uh, being a good COVID human and washing his hands. Mm. Good job. Did I catch that right, Brother Mead? I did. Setting a good example. Look at that. He's got the good stuff, too. Liquid gold. Especially now, is that a zipper or is that just a shot? I got to. <laughs> Did you hear me, brother? Me? You said liquid gold, right? Is 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 that Purell? Is that a zipper or is that just a shot? I guess he's going to take it all as a shot. I, I would yeah, say I'll so. take it all as a shot. Take it. <laughs> all right. What do I have? I have a rusty old nail. Let's see how well I can get it visible on there. Oh, you know what? I'll do it like this. There you go. See it there? Yeah. Now that does not look like a modern nail by any means. It certainly isn't. Uh, no, no, this, uh, this nail was handmade in about the year 75 AD by oh, Roman wow. craftsmen. 75 uh, so AD. That's right, the same century as uh, uh, some guy named Jesus. Uh, I've heard he was a big deal. <laughs> uh, the nail was uh, shipped to modern day Scotland uh, it, to fulfill its destiny in the construction of fortifications at the 20th Roman Legion's station of Inch Tuthil. Uh, Inch Tuthil is about a two hour drive from historical light viewer Robert Kennedy, who will be watching this when he gets up uh, in Scotland. He's out of uh, Lodge Dumbarton, Kilwinning, number 18, which itself dates back to the early 1700s. So shout out to Brother Kennedy. 
Uh, Julius or uh, Julius Agricola was the general in charge of Inch Two Dill, where the nail came from. Uh, he led about 5,500 Roman soldiers fighting against the Caledonians. Uh, they were an early native and fierce inhabitant people of Scotland. And in about the year 84 AD, so when this nail was just a youthful six or seven years old, uh, those Roman soldiers were called back to the European mainland, uh, which forced them to abandon their fortress. Because they were in a rush, the Romans had to bury a hoard of iron, including that nail, uh, because the Caledonian people valued iron more than gold or silver, and the hoard itself was not found until the 1950s, which brings us to the modern era. And uh, looks like we've got time for me to explain that that rusty nail is something I brag about at a lot of lodges in Texas. I usually have it on display at Waco Lodge, and I say that we have the oldest working tool of any lodge in Texas by having that nail. Uh, Kind of cheating, not Masonic or anything, but whatever. Uh, but Very but it, it has inspired a, uh, a ceremony of sorts that I've written up, uh, referred to as the Rusty Nail Program, which is something that has been done in other places. I don't know if you've had it in Kansas. Have you guys had the Rusty Nail Program? We do. We do. We don't see it as much uh, as of late, but it is a program that we have here. Cool, cool. So, uh, uh, ours, or the, the one I wrote and designed, uh, of course, anybody out there who's listening, the Rusty Nail program is catered towards uh, absentee masons who haven't been to lodge in a long time and might need to learn the grips or words or uh, whatever just to get going again and knock some of that rust off. Uh, and uh, I designed our program with that nail as kind of a, uh, a unifying implement that gets passed around and we talk about how uh, the Caledonians, which that nail was hidden from, uh, valued iron more than gold in the same way that uh, we as Masons uh, are called to value uh, uh, building ourselves into better men more than valuing, say, titles or honors or things like that. So, uh, yeah. That is awesome. Old nail repurposed for Freemasonry. So I got two questions right off the top. First of all, if you don't mind me asking, how did you come by this? It's a, uh, a don't ask, don't tell policy. Oh, fair enough. We'll leave it at that. So I'm joking. I bought it from a museum. <laughs> Sweet. Let's hear the story. There's not really one to it. It is more of a, uh, so y'all have how many of those? And would you be willing to sell one? Really? Just that lucky, huh? <laughs> That's yeah. insane, man. So you said that you guys keep this in the lodge on display. Um, does that bring a lot of people or is it one of those just kind of hidden gems that people just don't know about? Uh, I've got all kinds of wacky stuff on display, which is my usual setup for the podcast. So the stuff you see behind me on the shelves and all that, this nail is actually usually behind me on the podcast uh, next to the red devil mask. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think it's ever pulled anyone extra to the lodge, uh, except for a few of the members who haven't been there in a long time. Uh, I have been able to do one-on-one -on -one rusty nail programs with those guys. Uh, uh, but most of our artifacts and things, we, we used to have a lot of it on display. Uh, when I first found a lot of our stuff or, or loaned some of our stuff for my collection. Uh, and then during renovations over the last two years, more and more, a lot of that stuff's been pulled out of the displays out of the lobbies and put into uh, storage, unfortunately. So hopefully we'll be able to get it all displayed again soon. Fantastic. Well, we are coming up here on 859. Looks like we got quite a few more people joining in with us. I hope everybody's got their toasting glasses ready. Had, uh, let me see, we had one brother here, brother, uh, brother Scott Braston said he is toasting with some homemade scotch this evening. Homemade? Homemade. Oh, I'm going to have to get down to College Station. That's right. And we've got Brother uh, Nathan Tweedy back with us saying uh, that is a really neat uh, decanter that you got there. I totally degree, uh, agree with that. And we've got a Brother Neil uh, Selmer out of Statlin Island, New York, joining us this evening for the toast. Thank you so much for joining us, brother. Let's see where we are at on time looks like if he liked the decanter he'll love the shot glass 
Oh man, you got the whole setup, don't you? Yeah. All right, we're about five seconds till. Brother Robert, you mind giving sure. us the toast this evening? Here comes the toast uh, to departed brethren and all the brethren dispersed throughout the world. This is uh, the one that was sent in from Grandmaster Tony Borg. A toast to all our differences, a toast to common ground, a toast to what we are seeking, a toast to what we have found, to what brings us together, to what sets us apart, a toast to many different souls united with one heart. Here, here. Cheers. Very well said. Yes, that was. That was for most forceful. I remember uh, reading that. That's awesome, man. Ah, uh, that is the smoothest vodka in the world. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, I mean, you've got plenty of it to go around. Yeah, you always know, so. <laughs> Awesome. Guys, thank you again for joining us so uh, this evening. Uh, hope you'll join us again tomorrow. For those tuning in for the first time, just to give you a quick run through, we're doing this for the time that we are in uh, quarantine uh, while we can't be with one another. Grand Lodge of England kind of opened up the traditional Masonic nine o'clock chat uh, to include friends and family we can't be with. So we're doing that here on Historic Light and of course, adding in some history each night. So we'll be on at 845 uh, share a bit of history, and then we'll do our traditional toast at 9 p.m. Maybe Scott or uh, Brother Robert will bring back that awesome decanter for another evening. So with that, stay safe out there, and we will see you all tomorrow night, 845 Central Time. See you guys. Take care.